let's look at what can happen uh, when we have a transmission of a code word that has some correction bits in it. Let's say that this is our transmitter and it's going to send some sort of information to a receiving system. We'll call that RX. And so this is going to have, let's say this is sending out 1011 and then there's some sort of noise source or some sort of air and it kind of screws things up along the transmission. And instead of getting 1011, we get 0011. Or this bit here got screwed up. Something that our sec dead code word enables us to do, our single error correction dual error detection enables, enables us to do, is tell us how many errors there are. And if there's a single error, it can tell us which bit uh, was ruined or which bit was flipped. So let's assume, let's do an example where we are this system right here, where we've received something, we've received some bits, we have to do a little bit of detective work, to figure out if there were any errors, and if there's only one error, where was the bit flipped? So let's assume that we've gotten our sec dead code word, and it's this right here, one, one, Zero one 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 zero 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 one zero. You have to be careful if you're making examples like these because your check bits have to be calculated properly. You can't just throw up ran random binary bits like you can for other problems um, because they might not necessarily work right. So this is something. This is a correct code word and let's assume that one bit got flipped and let's say that it was this bit right here so let's actually just cross this guy out say that this actually got changed to a one all right so this is what we received so let's just say this is what we received here now, where we need to start is we need to, well, first it's actually a good thing to put your received check bits aside and we'll reference those later. So remember our check bits are at the zero position and then the powers of two. So we have one, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these five bits, so let's just put them right here. We got one, zero, one. Remember, so we're just keeping track. We're assuming that we got a one here. We never knew that this is a zero. We got a one there. The so one, zero, one, one. And then I like to separate this last bit because it's kind of a little bit more special of a check bit here. So we're going to put a zero there. So let's just say um, these are our received sec dead bits. And now what we need to do is we need to go about calculating based off of our data. So our data bits are these four, these four, a single zero here. We need to go about calculating what our check bits should be, then we want to see if they're if they agree with this or if they disagree, then that will tell us information about where error may be. So let's just start off by calculating check bit one. That's this guy right here. So we have a, a nice table that I usually make to go about calculating these. So I'll just go ahead and make it one more time. So here we've got, what I like to do is write every bit address, one through 12. We don't, we don't put zero in there. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
and 12. And now we just need to do the four bit binary equivalent. This is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. I'm going to stop talking now because it's going to be a bit annoying. Just regular binary counting. Uh, and our last bit here, 12. All right. And then what I like to do is put a box around our check bit. So our check bit is C1. It doesn't really do anything or indicate anything. I guess it just reminds us that we're not including these in our parity checks or in our, in our calculations. Or C8. All the ones that aren't boxed in are bits that we want to use for our our, uh, our check here. And then it might be a good idea for me to just go ahead and label these. This is 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All right. So C1 is calculated from numbers 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Oops, let me put my labels here. C1, C2, C4, C8. All right. So we need the value for bit 3. Down here, 12, 11, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Oops, this is supposed to be here. So bit three is a zero. Then bit five is a zero. Bit seven is a one. Bit nine is a one. And bit 11 is a one. So what do we have here? Well, we got three ones. And we're going to assume that this is even parity. So we've got three ones. That means that we need another one to make this number even, the number one's even. So I have four ones. All right, now we need C2. C2 is calculated from three, six, seven, 10, and 11. So number three is a zero. Six is a zero. Seven is a one. Ten is a zero. And eleven is a one. So let's go about seeing how many uh, ones we have here. We have two ones. So that means that this bit here is going to be a zero. Now we need to calculate C4. All right, so C4 uses bit 5, 6, 7, and 12. So 5 is a 0, 6 is a 0, 7 is a 1, and 12 is also a 1. We have an even number of 1, so that means this check bit is a 0. Last but not least, we got C8. We're going to exclusive or some bits together. And that's just calculated from 9, 10, 11, and 12. That's 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1. And this is an odd number 1, so this means that this bit here is going to be a 1 as well. And then, so something that uh, you might make a mistake on is you might assume that our dual error detection bit, or this last one, we want to calculate that with our new check bits, but we shouldn't do that. We should only be making our calculations off of the bits that we received. So for our, we'll, we'll call this C0, we, we just want to count up how many ones are in bits 12 through 1. We don't want to include this one. 
This shouldn't be included in the calculation. We only want to do the most significant 12 bits. So let's see how many ones we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The so seven ones. Therefore, our parity bit, since we have an odd number of ones, our parity bit would be a one. So now we have our calculated bits. So let's just put calc. And we want to make sure we get our order right here. So our C1 is our least significant bit. Well, not, not our very least significant bit. I guess our C0 is our least significant bit. So let's put a 1 here. And then our C1. And then C2, C4, and C8. Now we can go ahead and calculate our syndrome by just finding which bits are different in the sequence. So one and one, that's the same. Zero and zero, that's the same. One and zero is different. So we wanna put a one there. One and a one is a zero. A zero and a one, that's a one. So we have two pieces of information here. This is our single error correction. This is our dual error detection. So if we see that this single error correction syndrome code here is all zeros and our dual error detection is all zeros, that must mean that our calculated bits are the same as our received bits. And that means that we have no error. Right, so if uh, sec equals zero and dead equals zero, we'll say zero errors. And then for one error, for one error, our single error correction code is not going to be equal to zero. And our dual error detection bit is going to be one. And then last, if we have two errors, our single error correction code is still not going to be equal to zero. But remember, when, we're, when you have parity bits, if you have an even number of errors, your parity bit will seem like it's correct, right? So if we have two errors, our dead, oops, our dead bit is going to equal zero. So this is, so we need to look at these and see how many errors we have. And so here we can see that our single error correction code is non-zero, meaning that it's something here. And our dual error detection syndrome bit is a one. So that means that we have one error. And to find where that error is, you just look at your single error correction code and you just do the binary to decimal conversion. So 0010 to decimal is just a decimal two. So that means that bit two was flipped. And sure enough, remember that this is bit zero, one, two. So bit two was flipped based on what our code is telling us here. Also, remember that when we have two errors, when we have two errors here, but this information contained in the single error correction code can only give us the address of one bit. So if we have two errors, we can't make any corrections. All we can ask for is a retransmission of this code and hope that no more errors happen. So this is 
kind of the process that a system will go through when it receives a single error correction dual error detection code word.